Hi everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to episode one of my vlog on building a trading system. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've been reviewing ICT's 2022 YouTube mentorship program and applying those concepts to my trading. My ultimate goal has always been to create a short-term trading system of my own, and I think this is one of the reasons why ICT's teachings resonated with me. What ICT does is he gives you a set of foundational building blocks, and then it's up to you to go away and forward and backtest these concepts until you organically piece together and develop your own own style or system. If you look on YouTube, you'll find lots of traders who have gone through both his private mentorship and also the 2022 YouTube mentorship. What you'll notice is that all of these traders are similar, but they're not the same. And this is because they all use ICT's concepts, but they bring them together in their own unique way. I find this fascinating, and sure enough, I'm discovering exactly the same thing as I go through my own trading journey. And so this is why I decided to start this vlog. I'm going to publicly share my whole trading journey right from the ideation to back testing to forward testing and then eventually implementing into a live trading account and then sharing those results. With any luck, by the end of the process, I will have built my trading system and hopefully helped and inspired a whole bunch of other people to do the same thing along the way. So wish me luck, wish me luck. So please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and let's jump into today's video. So today's video is building a trading system the very first episode in my vlog. So I'm just gonna start off by going through some initial thoughts and some high level goals for this vlog. And then we're gonna look at trading system ideation. And so this is effectively just playing around with some ideas that will hopefully lead into what will hopefully become a trading system that we're able to use and start going to some proper testing and then eventually maybe some implementation. And so what I'm looking at first is the Asian trading range and the London kill zone. And I'll be using a trading example on Bitcoin from the 4th of September, 2022. So my initial thoughts and some goals for this vlog. At its foundation, I'm looking to apply ICT's concepts and develop my own short-term trading system. For me, it's really important that I build a system and trade assets that suit my lifestyle. And so what does that mean? Well, I live in Australia, and so trading the New York time zone, for example, that New York Open, is quite difficult for me because that's pretty much at midnight my time. And so whilst I've had a lot of success in terms of my back and forward testing, using that particular model, it just doesn't really work for me because I have other commitments, I've got a family, and so really trading that time zone and that asset class isn't gonna work for me regardless of how successful I can be with it. So as a consequence, I really need to find a time of day and assets that are gonna work for me and are gonna be something that I can really trade sustainably over a long period of time without really getting burnt out. And so still fitting in with that lifestyle type theme, I only really wanna trade a handful of times a week. I don't wanna be a slave to the screens. I've done that before in my previous jobs and also in my own previous trading. And it really just is too debilitating. And at this time in my life, I just don't really wanna do that anymore. I wanna develop a system that it can be maybe a little bit set and forget. I have a you know specific period of the day that I work in and that's dedicated to trading and everything else can go into you know the other business endeavors and you know personal endeavors and fitness and all those things that I'm interested in outside those hours. And with this particular system, I only really wanna be holding positions for a relatively short period of time. I've got other assets and other investments which I'm holding over different time frames, so they sort of fulfill those longer term investment and trading objectives. With this particular system, I'm really just looking at something that's gonna be something that's short term, intraday, and that's it. At its core, the whole point of this trading system is that it'll be income producing, and then this income will be taken and then channeled into other investments, which will also be hopefully income producing, which creates this compounding kind of effect. And as I said in the introduction, the whole point of this vlog is to build this in public, share the learnings and the results. And hopefully that helps other people who are on a similar journey or inspires other people to start this journey themselves. And so the first trade we're gonna look at is Bitcoin on the 4th of September, 
2022. Now this is part of this trading system ideation phase. So really just looking at some concepts, throwing them up against the wall and seeing what sticks. And so the reason why the Asian range and the London Open appeal to me, that's sort of later in my afternoon and evening, and it's quite a good time for trading for me because kids are already home, you know, we've had dinner, and I've got some really good dedicated time to spend in front of the charts and look for those setups without any interruptions. The other thing that appeals to me about that London Open specifically, if you go through some of the videos on ICT's YouTube channel, you know, he talks that there's often a very high probability that you'll get the low or the high of the day, and that creates a lot of opportunities to take trades in that particular part of the session. I think there's also quite a lot of flexibility there because there's a lot of assets that can be traded across this period with success cryptocurrencies, FX, and even some indices. So I think there's a lot of flexibility there and there's gonna be lots of opportunities to really extract some value out of this session. So this whole phase is just really about trialing this, seeing if there's some initial success before jumping into some more serious back testing and then forward testing. So let's kick off by determining our bias. So coming into this session, which is the 4th of September, you can see we've had the market trade down into this sort of 20,000 zone. We had that rally upwards and we're now in this process of a pullback and a consolidation back to the all time highs around this sort of 20,000 level. And you can see here we've created these two bearish fair value gaps on the way down. And I've sort of termed this formation like a truck and trailer because you have a bearish fair value gap, the market trades back into it. And in the process of you know creating that displacement down when we break these swing lows, you get another bearish fair value gap. And when I've gone through and looked at the data on you know different timeframes, not just the daily, but other shorter time frames because price is fractal. When you see this sort of truck and trailer formation, it generally precedes a strong follow through move. So that's sort of what I'm expecting. So going into the session, I have a bearish bias, but where specifically am I looking for liquidity to draw towards? So let's zoom in and we'll have a look at the charts closer to this range down here on the 4th of September, and we'll sort of be able to determine from there where we think price is gonna go. So now that we've zoomed in, I've just created this little checklist, if you like, of what we're exactly looking at. So as I mentioned before, we have these two bearish fair value gaps which are formed into this truck and trailer type formation. On this second bearish fair value gap, we can see the market's traded into it a number of times, so it's touched it four times. It hasn't quite filled that imbalance, but certainly we can be satisfied that we've traded up into that zone and we'd expect the market to start trading downwards. Now, the most likely draw on liquidity, I believe, is gonna be down to this previous day low down here. So I'd expect to see that in the next session. And then from there, I'd expect price to start to draw towards this sell side liquidity relative equal lows down here. So you can see these three candles here have created all lows at very similar levels. So we'd expect stops to be residing below these levels. Now, I don't think we'd necessarily get there in the next session, but certainly over the next few sessions, I'd expect that we will start to draw towards that level. And once we breach that level, well, we just have to look at the price action and sort of make some determinations from there. But for the moment, really what we're looking for is for price to move down towards this previous day low and maybe pierce through that, but I don't expect it to make it all the way down to this sell side liquidity relative equal lows down here. So we've zoomed in now to our 15 minute chart and we can just orientate ourselves just before we start to go any more into the trade and the trade setup. You can see this is that second bearish fair value gap just residing up here. So we've got that touch into it. We've got our previous day high here, our previous day low here, and that sell side liquidity, which is residing down there, those relative equal lows. So what we're expecting to see into this session is for the market to trade down and take out this previous day low, but we're not expecting it to make it all the way down to this sell side liquidity relative equal lows down here. So if we zoom in now to our five minute chart, you can see we have our Asian trading range just here, and we haven't yet gone into the London open just here or that London kill zone. Now, the important thing to note in the Asian trading range is we mark out the high of that range and then the low of that range. And what we're looking for is for price to break through either the sell side liquidity, so the low of that range, 
or to break through the buy side liquidity or the high of that range. And that's gonna help us to make a decision about how we're gonna take our trade and in which direction as we go into that London open kill zone. Now remember we're using New York time, so even though we're not trading in that session, we're still using the time in New York as our basis. And you can see we have midnight New York time labeled here and we've marked out the open and dragged that across. So remember we have a bearish bias going into this session. So what we're really expecting to happen is for price to go above the midnight open take out this buy side liquidity and then trade down towards this previous day low down here. And so this is our power of three concept in action. So we have our manipulation, accumulation, and then distribution. But keep in mind, we're also expecting to see either the high or the low of the day in the London session. And that's gonna give us a clear indication on the setup that we should be taking as well. So let's just play the market forward now and see how the price action evolved. And I'll just walk through what I was thinking as I was watching this as it happened. So we can see we start to trade above that midnight open, which is what I was expecting. But we actually trade down through the sell side liquidity and we start immediately trading down towards this previous day low here. We've also got these relative equal lows down here. And so as it stand, price looks set to take out these relative equal lows and potentially trade right down into this previous day low. So that's the opposite of what we're expecting. It's expecting the market to trade higher first, go through this buy side liquidity, and then trade down over the course of the day. But what we're seeing at the moment is the market's going straight towards this level and Potentially what we're gonna see is the low of the day, and that's actually gonna give us the opportunity to go long. So our prediction on where price will draw to has been correct, but potentially our bias for this session might be wrong, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be a setup that we can take advantage of. So let's play the market forward a little bit more and see what happened. So you can see we take out that sell side liquidity, we spike into it a few times, then we consolidate and just bounce a little bit off that level. Now at this time, no setups really are presenting themselves and I just don't feel that this move has been strong enough. We haven't reached the target and so I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm still expecting us to paint the low in this session, in this particular move, and I don't think we've seen that just yet. And so you can see that's the reaction we're expecting. We take out that sell side liquidity, these previous lows here, and then we spike down through that previous day low that we were looking at in our initial assessment when we were determining our bias. So from this point, I'm expecting that we've painted the low of the day, and I'm looking now to take a long trade on that basis and trade back up in towards that midnight open. So from here, I'm gonna zoom in now to the three minute chart. That's the one I've had a lot of success with Bitcoin on, and it just tends to be a bit cleaner. One minute tends to be a little bit too thin, and the four and five minute, you tend to not get a great risk reward. So three tends to be the sweet spot. Sometimes you still get some nice entries at one. So we'll just go into three. That's the one that I end up taking the trade on. Now we'll just play it a little bit further forward. Now you can see this is the reaction that we're generally looking for. So we have this bullish fair value gap which is formed. So you can see we have our three candle formation just here. We have this big displacement. So this is what we're really looking for, that big displacement. And we break market structure just here. So you can see we have a swing high pattern just there. That's that three candle formation where the central candle high is higher than the two candles either side of it. So we break market structure with this powerful second candle. And so this is where I took my trade. And so for this setup, I had my limit at the low of that third candle and I had my stop down here at the low of the first candle. And in terms of targeting, I had a few options here. So I've run my FIB from the move that broke market structure. So that's from this point to this point. And you can see if we go two standard deviations up, which is where I ended up targeting, we get a risk reward of 1.8, which is pretty good. 
The other option I could have taken was to target this buy side liquidity, so the highs from the Asian session. And you can see if I would have done that, that gives about a two times risk reward. But that isn't what I did. I targeted this two standard deviations, which you can see is just below that high. So it's a slightly more conservative target to take. Now, if we play that forward, we can just have a look at how this trade would have gone. Now it takes a little bit of time, but we can see the market actually hadn't traded back into that fair value gap that formed after we had this reaction from the previous day low. It trades back into it, and let's see what happens after that touch back into the fair value gap. So you can see we immediately trade higher. We go right up to that two standard deviation level. So our targets met almost immediately after trading down into that fair value gap. You can see we actually could have had our target at the highest from the Asian range because the market trades well up through that level. But remember one of the core parts of ICT's teaching is to really go after that low hanging fruit and just compound the returns rather than looking for the big wins. Now, when I went back and reviewed this particular trade, I noticed that there was actually a setup that I missed on the one minute chart. Now, as I said before, the one minute chart can be a bit sort of spotty and the candles can be a little bit hard to read. And so often I don't like taking setups on that one minute chart just because I find it's not very clear and you tend to get a lot of gaps. But if we go back to where we traded down through that previous day low, you can see that there's a setup there on the one minute chart, which would have got us a much quicker return than the one that we took on the three minute chart. And so here's that setup on the one minute chart. Now you can see we spike down through that previous day low here. We have this candle here and then we trade up. You can see we break market structure. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult to see, but we have the swing high here. We break market structure. The market trades back into that fair value gap before trading away. So we actually have two imbalances here. But remember from ICT's teaching, he always recommends that you plan to take your entry on the first or the nearest fair value gap, but you have your risk tolerance set to be able to sustain price going down into the second fair value gap. So that's exactly what we would have been able to do in this particular setup. You can see we would have had our long position here at the low of that third candle, and we could have put our stop down here at this swing low, or we could have even put it at the bottom of this second candle here because we've got that other fair value gap there and we wouldn't expect price to necessarily trade down into it. But certainly the more conservative stop placement would have been down here at the low. And you can see if we'd taken this setup, we would have had a relatively quick round trip. We would have been able to target this sell side liquidity up here and get a two times risk return. And again, if we're being a little greedier or a little bit more ambitious, we could have targeted some of these higher levels up here, either the midnight open or up to this 1.5 standard deviation level to get our three times risk reward. I hope you got something out of my inaugural vlog episode on building a trading system. Let me know what you think of this content in the comments and if you have any suggestions on how it could be better. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it because that helps other people to find it. And if you wanna join me on this journey, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so that you don't miss any updates. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.